first off, thank you for being here. Uh, you know, I know a lot of agents are kind of scared about this thing. So yeah, I just want to say first and foremost, like I'm here to ease your troubles. Like I'm here to help you not worry a bit about this. Um, yes, things are going to change dramatically. How things are going to play out exactly, nobody knows. You know, so many people are trying to run in so many different scenarios and they're telling me, oh, Ricky, you're wrong about this and this is the way it's going to go. Well, okay, well, you're doing the same thing. Like, you can't say what's going to happen because you don't know. Nobody knows. We've never been put in this position before, ever. Um, so you don't know how this is going to play out. For you. Anybody who acts like they know how this thing's going to play out, um, you got a serious case of your 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 ego, <laughs> your egotistical, because you know you 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 don't know. Um, so that's the first thing I want to throw out there. A lot of people want to throw out a lot of different things, but at the end of the day, you don't know. Also, what I'm going to talk about today, what I want to share with you today is my opinion, which doesn't mean much, right? I'm not your lawyer. I'm not your broker. I'm not your brokerage. I'm not your real estate commission. None of the above. Um, different areas are going to have different roles. They're going to have different things you can and cannot do. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about that today. But at the end of the day, I want you to know something and I want you to hear me. The rules that you feel like are in place right now are subject to change and they will change. Guarantee you that the rules that have been set before us that will come into effect August 17th will not be the same rules. I would even fear to say months later, years later, it's going to look completely different. Why? Because this is going to happen in stages. You know, when August 17th hits, we're going to have a lot of, uh, you know, listings out there who have already um, agreed to share commissions. We're moving into an environment where um, yeah, it's going to look a lot different. And so, you know, there's going to be this transition period of the listings that are currently on the market versus, you know, whatever it looks like moving forward. Um, you're going to have the the stage of, you know, agents understanding how this thing plays off. You're going to have the stage of buyers realizing they have to sign a buyer agency that they're going to pay their agent. If in fact, you can't get it from the seller, um, in which case there's going to be more buyers that go directly to listing agents. Um, and then over time, those same buyers are going to say, you know what? I don't want to go. That was horrible. Right. I understand the value of buyer agent. Now I'm going to, I'm going to pay a buyer agent, whatever they want. Right. That happens years later when those same buyers that buy today sell and buy later on down the road. What does the model look like when that happens? Yeah, four, five, seven years down the road when that buyer that buys today, buy, uh, you know, sells and upgrades in seven years. Um, you don't know what it's going to look like. You have no idea what it's going to look like. But I can tell you one thing. The more things change, the more we must depend on the things that never change. What never changes, right? Principles. The principles behind what we do never change. Once you get the principles down, you don't care about what happens in like, you know, these little, uh, you know, differences in the market and, you know, they're going to change something here and put it there and, and move it up. You don't care about that. You know, closings happen every day. Competition doesn't exist. Relationships over transactions. Let me take this thing to the moon because I understand how to retain relationships forever. It doesn't really matter at the end of the day. If they affect the way that we get paid, we adjust with it, right? I've always said, show me the new rules. Show me the new rules and watch me crush it. I believe agents will be more efficient in the new market. And the ones, listen, I, 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 I've gotten a lot of hate mail over the last 24 hours, all right? And even longer than that. You guys act like I have the power to like change the uh, the rules, right? Or like I created the rule. I'm nothing to do with the rules. I have nothing to do with influencing the industry to use the rules, what I'm here to do is to show you how to use the new world that we're living in to make more money. That's all I want to do is help you succeed at a higher level. That's it. I have zero agenda. I don't care if you buy a coaching program. I don't care what you do. It doesn't affect me at all. I'm doing what I was called to do, which is serve agents. That, that's my calling. That's what I do. I help agents make a lot of money and will continue to do so at an even higher level in this new environment, this new market. Do I know how it's going to play out? No, but I know one thing. I live by the principles of business and life and God. And I, I, I know, I know that's for certain, right? Um, speaking of certainty and uncertainty, you know, I think agents are going through, <laughs> they, they, speaking on the, the hate mail type stuff, 
I think we're going through the stages of grief. Like your first, first is denial. I think agents are going through denial. Some of them are going through anger, right? But sooner or later, you're going to accept. You're going to accept this new world that we're living in because, at the end of the day, um, this is what this this was the case, right? This was the case against buyers being able to negotiate the fee that their agent gets paid by them, right? They they. They were able to do that before, but guess what? Agents didn't tell them. You know, they weren't aware that they could negotiate that, which, which, you know, where lives the problem, right? So, anything I say today is not to be taken out of context. You know, contact your lawyer, your broker, talk to you know the real estate commission, etc., about the rules in your area, your local board, etc. You know, before you go off and say Ricky says this and Ricky says that, I want you to know. I'm here to help you. I'm not here against you. I'm here to help you understand this, maybe see a different perspective and be ready for the changes. If I were an agent still now, it, like, you know, what I mean by that is that I was thick in sales, head down, making my calls every day, showing property, going to listing appointments, closing deals. Heck, I would think the same thing because I, I wouldn't be me at this point with reading about this every day, talking to people about this every day, talking to agents and broker owners um, and industry leaders about this every day, all week long about this. Like I've got some pretty serious insight more than I ever would if I were an agent. And so I feel compelled to share as much as I do uh, with you guys. Um, so again, this is my opinion. Nobody knows what's gonna happen. What I wanna do today is just give you my thoughts all right, I want to give you my opinions. I want to tell you kind of how I came to this point with this. Um, I want to answer some questions. Um, so, you know, if you guys have questions or whatever, you can put your hand up on the Zoom. And and as I kind of get through, you know, how I how, the, what I feel like um, is something that we as an industry, we as, you know, the, the leaders of the industry and on the, the real estate agent side of this, you know, need to consider, need to be thinking about as we move forward for the better, for to, to be able to serve our clients better. Um, then I'll answer some questions. And I want to give you guys some ideas on stacking listings because, you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, like I said, agents are going through denial, right? A lot of them are in denial that, oh no, this, there's no way this can happen and this isn't going to happen, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you know, I mean, if you're going to be in, in denial about this, you're not going to adapt. You're, everybody's been saying that the ones that adapt, right? You're going to have to adapt. You hear all, like, all these changes coming with the NAR settlement, et cetera. You better be ready to adapt. The ones that adapt are going to do fine, and the ones that don't are going to be left behind, right? And, a lot, and there's a lot of agents sitting there denying what's going to happen. I'm still going to do this. I'm still going to do that. I, this is what I'm going to do, and that's fine. Right. We don't know how this is going to play out. I'm giving you my opinions based on the information that I have in front of me that's subject to change. Um, however, if you're not adapting, right, then that's kind of the opposite of what everybody's been talking about. Whether you want to face the fact or not, okay, and whether you want to continue to do the same thing or not, that's fine. But here's the fact this is a huge change in the industry and it will completely reshape the way that we do business. I don't care how you look at it. Okay. At the end of the day, right, commissions are decoupled. And if you offer a buyer agent commission, it's going to be in the form of seller concessions. Now, now agents are going to say, well, not in my market, you know, not my listing agreement, not my MLS, not, you know, I can offer it here. I can do this. I can do that. Okay. That's fine. But just keep in mind that the DOJ has already already been talking about continuing this investigation and reopening reopening lawsuits um you know you know if we are if we go down the same road we will end up right back where we were okay if we if we're if the seller and the listing agent are going to set what the buyer agent is going to get you know, in other words, what the buyer is paying their agent, and we set that, guess what? That's price fixing, right? Just by definition. That's what the case was about. 
and then and then not giving the buyer the opportunity to negotiate that 3% down to 2, not even giving them the opportunity to just saying, "Hey, buy this. We show up to closing. I get a check. How'd you get it? I don't know. Who knows? Let's go buy another one. I'm getting rich over here." Um that was the problem and that and that's what they're just listen. As much as it helps with um representation and giving buyers representation that can't afford to buy to pay their own agent and all the great things that the current model does for the industry the fact is is that there was a lawsuit that was won and settled out of and now we have to abide by that right otherwise we could have appealed it why didn't they appeal it because because the way that the antitrust laws are written the way that the price fixing works honestly and this is my opinion yet yeah, no like like, don't take this out of context, but they weren't going to win that, I believe, is the reason. Then they could, the, let's put it like this. The gamble was too much. They had no idea what the financial responsibility of an, of an appeal would be for the chances that was probably overwhelming that they would probably more than likely lose that appeal. Um, and so, And so here we sit. So again, listen, I don't care what the rules are. Show me what they are so that I can take them and go build my seven figure bit. That's all I need to know. I don't need to know why. I don't need to know, oh, if, oh, I wish I could do that. I don't need to know all that. I need to know what the rules are. You know, guys, tell me what the rules are. Put them right here on this piece of paper so that I can go crush it because that's all I am. That's my middle name, Ricky Crush It Caruth. I, I, I don't care about anything else. I'm going to go kill it. And that's the attitude that each and every one of you um, need to need to have with this. You don't care. You just want to know what it is so that you can go take advantage of it. Something I want you guys, this is kind of the theme right here during this time, right? I can't, I, I, I thought, I thought a lot about this and the theme of this era for agents, right? This is what I, I and, and look, I, I, I wouldn't I would even mind. I wouldn't even mind if you wrote this down. And I wouldn't mind if you put this on your wall. I wouldn't mind if you, if you said this out loud every day, but I want you to write down the words, don't lose your focus. Don't lose your focus. I want that to be in the forefront of your mind through all of this stuff. And you hear all these things and it's just like, what do you believe? And there's all this negativity over here, over there. And by the way, that's why I read books. Just I'm like a avid reader. You know why? Because there's so much negativity in the world. You got you have to spin. You have to combat all the organic negativity coming in your mind with as much positive stuff as you can just to try to balance it out, just to keep your sanity in a positive realm. You're at a constant war with negativity and positivity. You know, through all the media outlets and 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 different things that you hear, and even negative people, it's like, man, when I wake up in the morning, I'm running to my books so I can sit down and read and, and like and like get some positivity happen in my mind to flush all the negativity that happened probably in my mind throughout the night. Uh, you know, get it out of there because like, and if you aren't doing that, then you're just you're just spiraling, right? You're spiraling. Get out of it, man. Get. Here's another thing. Get in your own bubble, right? Get like, dude, when, when I was at Remax of Orange Beach and I was building my million dollar business, I went, I ran to my office. I didn't talk to the front desk person. Like I just sprinted to my office, sat down and started just calling people like a wild man. People just saw like Tasmanian devil, like uh, tornadoes in my office. Um, um, that's all they saw. I was in my bubble. I didn't talk to anybody. Right. The friends I had were like acquaintances, like like my friend was like crushing it. That's my friend. Crush it. But I want you to know that your career is more uncertain than you think. Right. And the more th the more that things change, the more you have to depend on the things that never change. What never changes? Well, what never changes is that people are going to buy and sell real estate every day, regardless of what the commission rates are, regardless of who pays the commission, regardless of what's happening. People are going to continue to buy and sell real estate every single day of your life. And people need agents. That's why we're all here, right? Do you think that if agents weren't needed or we didn't have any value, like, 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 like 
like 3% of the population thinks that we would even exist. We wouldn't even be here if that was anywhere even close to the truth, guys. We bring so much value, it's unfathomable. And and listen, we will continue to to make a great living. All right. Um that let me let me just dive into this and then I want to take some questions. So how I came came to the final realization that this was real. Okay, that this was real. Because I'm like you, I went through denial, I went through anger, um, everything. And the moment that I realized that this was real is that is when I saw what the DOJ did to California. I don't know if you guys paid attention to that. I'm sure you didn't, especially if you're not in California. Um, but I pay attention to everything. I read everything. And I'll tell you that the what happened was it just just the overview was that they were going to release their new listing agreements and their buyer agency agreements, stuff like that. And the DOJ stepped in and said, nah, -uh. you ain't going to, you, you are not going to do that. You ain't going to send them documents out. Now I never saw the original documents, but it took them about a month. I want to say, if I'm not wrong, thinking back, if my head, if my head's thinking right, it's about a month, they revised them. And then they put out the new ones that are out now. And you know, as I, as I read through those and I talked to agents over there in Cali, um, I, I started that, that was the moment for me. And when I realized what happened there, I said, Oh my goodness, this is real. And what, and this is what happened. They, number one, they took the buyer agent commission totally out of the contract. Um, there was a field for seller commissions. And then there was a second field for the for the extra commission that you're going to get as a listing agent if in fact an unrepresented buyer comes through and buys the property. So like that's that's basically like the DOJ and like whatever, whoever revises their things, they're admitting to the fact that more buyers are going to go directly to the listing agent and they're giving the listing agent more money for those deals. When I saw that, I started to see a glimmer of hope number 1 that okay, okay, Listing agents aren't going to do twice the work for half the money, right? They're, they're, they are going to get paid something based on what they, what they negotiate with the seller if, in fact, the buyer comes directly to them, okay, which I found, I found extremely interesting, number one. Number two, when I realized that not only are they not allowing buyer agent commissions to be on the listing agreement or MLS – but they're also not allowing buyer agent commissions to be offered anywhere, websites, anywhere, right? And so my local MLS, you know, they put out an email and we don't even have our listing agreements yet. They're um, for my local board. Um, the buyer agreements are supposed to be out tomorrow. We're supposed to get a copy of those. And I think we're still waiting on listing agreements. Can't wait to read them. Can't wait to read them. But they can't offer buyer agent commissions anywhere and my local mls put out an email and said hey you can offer a buyer agent uh you can't offer buyer agent commissions on on the mls but you can offer it everywhere else right you can offer it everywhere else you can offer it on your website you can offer it on postcard you can offer it, you can you know you can advertise it anywhere you want to and you know that that in itself right there you have to think about that for a second okay I, you, you, okay, so obviously, you know, like there's some reason, like there's something negative happening that's preventing you from allowing me to offer the buyer agent commission on my local MLS. There's something so bad I can't offer it there, but I can offer it everywhere else. Why is it so bad I can't offer it on MLS, but I can offer it other places? And so when I started to realize what California did, and it wasn't California, guys, it wasn't California, it was... It was uh, it was the DOJ, which is a nation. It's a it's a merit. It's a it's a USA thing. This is going to go across the board, and it may take time to hit every single market, etc. But I believe this to be true. Um, and I'm I'm seeing comments. Yes, you can offer buyer commission on your webs. Oh, okay. Well, I haven't seen. I've like I've. Okay, um, that's interesting because I've talked to many agents, brokers who 
who say otherwise. See, there's so much conflicting information out there. That's why you have to take all this stuff with, with a grain of salt. And that's part of today's call, right? On top of don't lose your focus, okay? The second part of this is quit listening to stuff and focus on what you need to do to go out there and expand your business, okay? Which, by the way, I'm doing the next, and this is this is one you really want to be at. If you haven't been on one of my Set More Listing Appointments challenges, this August 5th, you need to be on that challenge. Um, I'm doing $100 off today, today only. Go to setmorelistingappointments.com and use the discount code 100 for the VIP uh, for the to, to get the VIP ticket and get $100 off. Um, but you you do number one, you need to stop listening to stuff. You need to realize what it takes to actually build your business. And number three, you need to build a listing based business like that. Like that was the case before all this came along. Right now that this came along, it's like multiply. It's like 10 X, like 10 X. It's almost like, you, <laughs> like, yeah, that's all you need to be focused on, which is all I've ever taught agents to focus on. Okay. Nevertheless, whether you can do it with, um, you know, advertising or website, et cetera, think about the, the psychology behind uh, a board or a, com or a commission saying, oh, you, 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 you just can't advertise on MLS. You can advertise it everywhere else. Okay. Well, you don't think the DOJ with their continued investigation is going to crack down on that and change those rules? I do. I don't think that those rules are going to are going to exist. And if you do offer a buyer agent commission, right, it's going to be in the form of a concession. And if you start saying that the concession is the commission, then we're lining ourselves up for another lawsuit, ladies and gentlemen. Again, my opinions. OK, the whole thing was, is that we're setting the buyer's commission up front so they can't negotiate it or have any real say so on the back end. We're at they're at the mercy of us. Um, which, which was the so-called definition of the entire lawsuit when the price fixing scheme, so-called allegedly. So if we're just going to turn around and do the same thing, it, it's only common sense that we're going to end up in the same place. Okay. Now here's another one, your brokerage, right? Different brokerages are going to have different rules as well. They may go deeper than whatever rule uh, your board has, or your state has, or why? Because they want to cover their selves so they don't have to write a multi-million dollar check on the next lawsuit. This is, this is, we're skating on thin ice with all this. Okay. Okay. So, so we got that. Okay. How I came to be to realize this is real. The DOJ is going to crack down. They are going to continue to, to, uh, you know, you know, manipulate. They're going to continue to tweak the rules moving forward. This is going to happen in stages. You know, you've got listings that are offering buyer agent commission now that are listed that were listed before August 17th. It's going to bleed into however it looks after August 17th. Then all those are going to close. Then you have buyers that goes direct to the listing agent. Then you're going to have a lot of sellers that offer seller concessions to try to cover um, uh, buyer agent commissions. Then that's going to start to dwindle down. There's going to be stages to this. It's going to happen in phases. It's not going to be like this overnight thing. The only thing that's going to be overnight is the fact that we have to abide by the new rules, which is we have to have a mandatory buyer agency in place. And there's many different forms of those, you know, there's non, uh, there's the uh, non-exclusive, you know, there's the ones where you just show one house. There's the ones where they don't pay anything. There's going to be the ones where they do pay. There's going to be ones that are six months, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Let me mute you guys. Okay. All right. Um, so listen, I, I'm just going to give you a couple of thoughts. All right. And then I want to take some questions and then we'll talk about stacking some listings. So if you have a question, just throw your hand up on the zoom and I'll, uh, I'll, we'll start, we'll start going through some of your, um, some of your concerns, some of your opinions, et cetera. But when, to give a different perspective on this, if, if let's just say you're representing a seller, you go to a listing appointment. Okay. You're talking to the, talking to the seller. Right. And we're talking about, you know, the commissions, right? Well, in the agreement, it's it, like even, okay, so I saw a uh, Atlanta agreement, listing agreement, 
right? And like, of course, California does not have the buyer agent commissions in there at all. The, the, but you know, the Atlanta agreement that I saw, which I don't know if that covers the whole state or if it's just Atlanta, I don't know. You know, I just got a copy of the commission part of it. It has, you know, the sellers, the listing agent commission and a paragraph about it. It's negotiable. It's this, it's that. And then, and then another up under there, it's got separately, if the seller wants to pay the buyer agent, some of the buyer agent commission, this is how much they'll pay and da, 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 da. So, it, so it's separating it. Whereas before we were putting 6% and then, and then there was a little sub paragraph that said, oh, three of that will go to the buyer's agent if one uh, is included in the deal, right? So even the, even the agreements that still, still have the language for buyer agency um, commission in there, it's still separated where you're putting two separate numbers um, that aren't really associated with each other per se. As we're like, think about the new world, right? And forever agents are like, well, um, you know, if you're not offering well, a marriage of commission, then it's then it's not going to be shown, right? It's not, it's not going to sell, okay? Not going to sell. Yeah, I believe that for a long time, and and I don't know how this is going to play out, but I think in the new world that may or may not be true. That may or may not be true. I don't. I don't think that that's going to be like the thing. It could be a thing. It could be a factor, but it's not necessarily going to be the factor. And it could be the factor for certain buyers, but not all buyers. And I think you're going to see um, sellers um, who, you know, get away with it. I, I. But here's the thing: when I'm advising a seller and I'm explaining all the options, it's like, okay. You know, it's after August 17th, you know, this is the buyer agency thing. The buyer commission is a separate deal. Right now, buyers are, it's mandatory that they sign an agreement with their agent with how much that their agent is getting paid. It states that if the seller does not pay that, then the buyer is going to pay that. Okay. We don't know how much that is for any buyer. So, so why are we going to put out, say, 3%? We don't know if they sign an agreement for 2%, right? And now I'm not doing a fiduciary duty to my seller to get them the best deal possible. I could have saved them a percent. What if the buyer that buys the house is perfectly okay with paying the buyer agent commission themselves outside of the closing or, or however that look, whatever that looks like? What if they're okay paying it, okay? And we offered 2%, 2 half, whatever, well, now the buyer's just laughing their way to the bank because they got an extra 2.5% that they were willing to pay anyway that they just used for closing costs and everything, and I could have saved my seller that money. I'm just, I'm just thinking of situations, right? These are just situations that will happen, happen every time. No, I'm not giving you like a play-by-play -play for every single deal. I'm telling you situations that could come up, and I'm trying to help you understand how you can use this to protect your seller to save them money oh it just it, it only depends on what they net what they net is the most important thing okay well they might have market price is only this much i can't get any more right okay well they're okay with this net you know minus five percent okay they're okay with that net but would they be happier if they could get two more percent and i could be the professional i am to help them get that extra two percent because the buyer was okay um, paying their own agent or an unrepresented buyer came to me and I got an extra 1%. So I still saved them 1%. Are they going to be happier if they got an extra one or 2%? Yes. They're going to be happier with you, the agent that was looking out for their best interest to make sure that they got the best deal possible and made the most money just because I net what they want. You know, that's always good. But if I can exceed that, Right. And if here's the flip side, if I don't exceed that when I know I could have, how am I going to sleep at night? Every time I take a sip of Fresca, you guys know, I get a new listing. All right. Um, so scenarios, right? I'm just, I'm just opening your mind up to scenarios here. When I'm talking to that seller, I'm like, you're like, okay. Um, I'll, I'll pay some of the buyer agent fee. Okay, great. You know, we can do it. We can do it one of two ways. You can just tell me what you're going to pay. We can put it out there as seller concessions, right? Or we can just say, well, we'll, we are entertaining offers that include seller concessions and let's just see what they come up with. 
Because the first rule of negotiation, guys, the first rule is, is let the other side say the number first. Why would I say 2% when the buyer agent signed for some, with some flat fee agency for 5,000 bucks or 1%? I'm offering 2%. Now, now listen, mind you, the seller really wants to sell? Like, let's just put 3% out there. Let's just get this thing going. I'm happy to pay 3%. Great. Let's put 3% seller concessions and get it out the door. The point is, is that you're going to have to work these deal by deal. Right. You've got to become a really great negotiator. You've got to become a really great um, understanding person of what people's motivations are. That's why I teach uh, what I teach when it comes to learning sellers and buyers motivations um, and, 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 and the depth that I teach agents to go to when it comes to understanding why people are trying to do what they're trying to do. Because until you know that, you don't know what the next step is. You don't know if. You know, we should offer buyer agent commission or not offer like you like until you understand their their full situation to where you're completely you have complete clarity. I always say ask ask so many questions that ask questions ask so many questions you've asked questions that they haven't even thought about about their situation and ask enough questions until you have the light bulb moment that you are completely clear on exactly what they're trying to do and why. Then and only then can you put together a game plan that fits exactly what they're trying to do. All right, let me see. Get muted. Bam. Boom. Cool. Uh, let's see. I don't think I see. Do I see hands up? I don't think I see any hands up. Okay. If anybody has any questions, just put your hand up. If you have a comment, if you have anything you want to add, if you have a question, if you want to debate me on something, I'm happy to hear because I'm not here to argue uh, I'm just here to state the facts I know, what I think based on my research. And um, but at the end of the day, nobody knows what's going to happen. So I'm not here to tell you I know what's going to happen. I'm here to tell you, show me the new rules and let me, which is you, let us crush it. All right. If you're going to be if you're going to come on, you got to turn your video on. Let's see. All right. Didi, you are on. DD, I can't hear you. Okay, you just have to unmute, which is probably hard to do when you're driving. So be careful with that. You try to figure that out. I'm going to go to Laura, and then we'll come back to you. Hey, Ricky. Hey. How are you? Doing fine. All right. So trying to be creative here. What's stopping anybody, you know, if the buyers just go straight to the listing agent? If it's my buyer already and they go to the listing agent, what's stopping them from just sending a referral agreement out? Is that still considered like a commission sharing? I mean, if I send something out of state, I'm sending a referral agreement with my buyer, my client, away to a listing agent. What's the difference? I guess I'm not understanding the question totally. Give me the scenario. Okay, so in a normal right now market i have a buyer here in new york state i send them to south carolina they hook up with another agent i have a referral agreement in place so okay. when they close on their new deal down there i get paid part of the commission from the listing agent side okay because they because they bought the listing agent's listing because well because they went they just went to another agent altogether that i referred them out to okay you referred them to an agent and then they buy something out of state. Okay. They, why did the listing they, agent send you a referral? Why didn't the sell? Why didn't the agent you referred them to send you the referral? It was my buyer going to them. Oh, and you're, and you're licensed there. No. So it's not your buyer. You referred it to somebody. Now it's their buyer. You referred them to. It, correct. Okay. I guess. So it's not okay. your buyer. So not anymore. Not but anymore. Up here in New York State, it would have been my client. But we're so not in New York. The... You, you referred it out, and it's their buyer now per yep. agency, right? Yep. And then they bought, and so did they buy a, li a listing that the agent you referred them to had? No. Okay, no. so they bought from a, another agent. So what's the question? So I'm just thinking if I'm working with the, actively working with a buyer here in my market, and they decide, they want this house and the 
the selling agent uh, or the seller is not offering a buyer's agent commission hmm. in any way, shape or form. Well, they would have, but the thing is, is they would have already signed an agreement with an agent saying that they're going to pay them if the seller doesn't pay the commission. So the, so the buyer is going to pay the commission if the seller doesn't. Okay. Yeah. So that's the thing is we have to have buyers sign agreements now, mandatory after August 17th, that if the seller doesn't pay this fee that I charge for working for you, then you're going to have to pay it. And it's not like, oh, you're going to have to pay this fee. Like, I'm working for you, buyer. Right. I'm working for you. I'm doing the work for you. You don't want to pay me for the work I'm doing. Right. That's like, are you going to go roof a house if you're a roofer, if they're not going to pay you for the work you're doing? Right. If you're a lawyer and you go sit down with somebody, a lawyer with a consultation, and they say, here, sign this letter of engagement. And this is how much I charge, right? You're going to pay them for the work that they're doing for you. That's the world that we're moving into, ladies and gentlemen, all right? The buyers are going to pay you as the buyer agent for working for them. Now, we, we will try to get it from the seller. In the beginning, I think we'll have a lot of sellers that still offer uh, big seller concessions yeah. to, to kind of, you know, as, as we move forward. And we'll see how, how everything ends up when the dust settles down the road. But um, yeah, there's going to be a lot of sellers that still offer buyer agent fees through concessions, which buyers can use for anything, right? It's not going to be called buyer agent commissions. It's going to be called seller concessions that the buyer can use for anything. Um, but yeah, if they get buy a house that the seller's not willing to pay the, the commission, then the buyer will pay it. They've signed a piece of paper that says they will do so. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. I was just I, I overthinking probably, mm -hmm. you know, trying to be too creative and try to reinvent the wheel. Yeah. <laughs> but Here. it's yeah, it's just gonna take a little getting used to, you know. It will. It definitely will. No, absolutely. Now here here's the thing. Your business is gonna be much more efficient because I this I believe that the really great agents are going, they understand what this new model is. Um, you've still got sellers who are going to offer, you know, seller concessions. Okay, great. Let's take them out of the equation for just a second. And let's think about the sellers who will not offer seller concessions, buyer agent commissions, whatever. Let's think about that group. That group, let's say I listed for three, and I'm going to get another one if an unrepresented buyer comes through. Well, I believe in this new market we're heading into, we're going to have more buyers going straight to listing agents. Well, in that scenario, I'm getting 4%. Instead of 3 yeah. And I'm going to have more people, more buyers coming to me than before because of the new rules, especially in the beginning. Again, I think that's going to taper off over time. People are going to realize how hard it is to, to actually – Buy, buy a house and they're going to come right back to us. It's a social experiment that's going to go really bad for a lot of people. But especially in the beginning, right? So this is why it's so crucial, guys, to be a listing agent moving into this new world. Why? Because more buyers are going to be coming to you just because you have a listing. You guys understand this? Having a listing is better than any lead gen thing that you could possibly have. Why? Because all the buyers that don't want to pay buyer agent fees are going to come straight to you and you'll have a deal with the seller to get paid a little extra for handling those deals. And you won't have any representative, you won't have any fiduciary duty to the buyers because they're going to sign a piece of paper saying, I know you work for the seller and I'm fine being unrepresented. Um, so I believe that the listing agents will make more money because they'll, they'll get more buyers that come directly to them. And they won't make as much as they used to if they were getting 6%, right? I don't think, I think those days are, those days could be gone. I don't know. We'll see how it plays out. In my opinion, those days could be gone. Um, so on the seller, on the listing side, you make more. You need to stack up so many listings, you can't even see the top. It needs to be Mount Rushmore of listings. And then on the buy side, you're only going to work with the buyers who have agreed to pay you. Now, I was talking to one of my best friends. He's the number one REMAX agent in Alabama. He took the throne and, um, you know, we ran a lot of scenarios past each other. And one of the scenarios was, you know, a buyer that can't afford to pay the buyer agent fee. Um, but they sign a buyer agency for 2%. And they basically tell you like, I can't afford to pay you 2%. Um, what do you do then? Well, 
listen, there's going to be a lot of different situations, and this is one of them. That could be a scenario where you only show them properties that are offering a buyer agent commission. You, they only look at those homes. You sign that, and you just only look at homes that... But but it's crazy because if you veer away from the homes where the sellers are not offering a buyer agent commission, that could have been the dream home for the buyer. And the seller might have been fine with the buyer agent commission being in the offer as a, as a concession, whatever. You know, there's a lot of stuff, a lot of different things. But at the end of the day, I believe that listing agents are going to rule. And from the buy side, you're going to be much more efficient because you're not going to work with every single buyer. Um, you know, and there's going to be a, 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 a massively clear agreement up front with buyers, which let's face it, never really existed in, in, uh, in, in the, in the realm of everything. All right. Let's see. If you want to ask a question or whatever, you need to turn your video on. Let's go with Trey. Yeah. What's up, Ricky? How you doing, hey. buddy? What's up, man? So, um, just kind of thinking back on the history of buyer agency, right? Like before the nineties, it didn't exist. And then it comes around because of a different lawsuit. I don't think buyer agency is going away. And I kind of look at it from an economic standpoint, right? Sellers incentivizing buyers to buy the property, incentivizing buyer agents to drive those buyers in. Where do you yeah. see seller sub agency playing at all this? Um, honestly, man, like I know what you're saying. But and and it could totally play out like that. Um, but again, we're moving into this new, completely uncharted territory, right? That we just don't know how everything's going to play out. And like, yes, okay, incentivizing buyers and buyers agents, that's great. And that, and like in today's market, if you were to not offer a buyer agent commission, you would, you it like it would be really tough because like you can see it on MLS, like you know what it is. Um, you know, I, how would that work? Honestly, wait a minute. That's a good question. How would that work? Because if if in today's world where 99%, if there's one listing that doesn't have a buyer agent commission on MLS today, where the other every, every single other a listing does, your buyer wants that house, right? What do you do? You don't really have anything in place that says the buyer's going to pay you. Like some agents do. I get it right now. Moving into it. Some agents have already started doing that. Some agents have been doing that for a while. But we've also been in a market where it always came from the seller side through the listing agent, whatever the listing agent negotiated with the seller. So what happens in this market before August 17th, if there's a listing, there's no buyer agent commission that the buyer actually wants to buy, right? And then what do you do? You kind of have a fiduciary duty at that point. Like, what do you do, right? Work for free type thing. And like, this is, this is the thing too. Because agents are like, well, I'll just put zero on the buyer on the buyer agent, um, the buyer agency, and then we'll, uh, you know, we'll get it from the seller, guaranteed. Uh, you can't guarantee that. What if the one house they want, especially in the new world, the seller completely refuses to pay anything towards the buyer agent closing costs, commissions, concessions, any of that stuff? You signed a buyer agency agreement for zero, and now you're going to get paid zero on a deal, guys. If you if you like. I work the numbers. If you get 1%, you're breaking even. Like in life, you're breaking even. And that's if you're doing quite a few deals. Taxes, broker fees, expenses, wear and tear, you're you're breaking even. 2%, you're making a decent living. Right? 3%, <laughs> you're getting rich. Right? And like we've been there for a while. But 1%, you get down below 1%, you you're going negative. That's why Purple Bricks isn't around anymore. They had a $5,000 buyer broker flat fee. And like, you know, there's companies that lose money that stay in business for decades. Take Zillow, for example. Take um, Open Door. Take OfferPad. Take Redfin. Like, they lose, they've lost probably, they probably, each of those companies, I bet you have lost over a billion. And some of them into the billions. Um, but they're still around. Can you imagine having a business model so bad that not only do you not, you know, like make money, but you go out of business, like gone. That was purple bricks because $5,000 flat fee to represent a buyer, you go negative. Right. Um, I get what you're saying. And like, I'm, I'm all about it. But, but when you think about the fact that you're representing the seller, okay, Trey, and you don't know what that buyer sign an agreement with, with their agent. 
and it kind of makes me scared to throw out a number unless my unless my seller is like I just want it sold. I'm right. I want to offer something. Like I get that that scenario, right? But your normal everyday scenario, people that aren't necessarily in a hurry, they want to squeeze as much as they can out of it, right? You know who I'm talking about, right? Um, I don't know that I want to throw a number out there. I just maybe I put in the comments, seller will entertain con a concession, a seller concession offer. You know, to let all the agents know, hey, we'll, we're entertained paying some stuff. Just let us know what you think. Once we get the offer in hand, then we take a look at the net and see where we actually want to be and see if we can make this actually work. Um, I don't know, man. Yeah, I'm just kind of thinking of it from like a buyer standpoint, too, where a buyer may say, hey, look, I, I don't want to enter an agreement with you. I'm going to look on my own mm -hmm. at properties on the market without a buyer agency agreement, without a buyer agent. Yeah. And then you're going to have them going through different funnels or exposures to property. So there's, I think I see a niche in the market opening up if seller sub agency exists for agents to make money by driving traffic to, to listing agents and brokerages of solely buyers that are not going to be represented because they don't want to enter that agreement. Um, it would just depend on if the buyer likes the house that that brokerage has listed. Right. Because they're, like trying, what, they're trying to be I think that's what Laura was trying to say right? with the referral thing. Like, hey, I'm, I'm going to refer a buyer to you, Mr. Listing Agent, who wants that specific property and yeah. find a way to get paid on it. Um, I think that that's kind of hairy. Because then, cause then you have to figure out how you're going to get compensated. And if you're not getting compensated from the buyer, what are you going to charge a flat fee to the buyer for setting all this up? No, through seller sub agency is how you'd be compensated. So, oh uh, yeah, um, I think that that's a broker, state by state, lawyer, DOJ, NAR. I think that's a that's a situation for all those people to answer. I don't know. I would say that's kind of, that's that's some gray area stuff you're talking about. But I like where your head's at. Like, where's an opportunity? How can I take the situation and turn it into something? Right. Yeah, are exactly. you an agent that gets listings and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Are you good at getting listings? Uh, when I was in production, yeah, I'm um, about to ramp it back up though. Got, Got out you. into Got coaching you. and leadership, but it's Dude, time honestly, to man, hit this I opportunity. Just, honestly, I would just go stack 50 to 100 listings over the next couple months. But between now and the end of the year, stack 50 listings. Man, you have so much business. I mean, you just be, you'll be cranking cranking good stuff man thank you uh, let's see is it d yeah d did you figure out your thing i did it was my privacy settings for some reason it turned off my zoom but i was just gonna i'm gonna pose the question because i'm a listing agent myself um i have a number of people on our team in fact many of them are on this meeting but I take listings about an hour, two hours away from me. And if somebody is reaching out to me as a buyer, what am I supposed to do? Hop in my car, drive two hours out of my way to open a door? Or am I going to have to start paying an agent every single time somebody wants that door open? Yeah, you're going to have to start paying an agent, I would say. Um, you know, I would, I would, um, that's tough because like I can't sit here and say, well, only take listings that are close to you. Right. Because well, that's, that's the other thing. Like I live in a really nice area and my neighborhood alone is very sought after for real estate agents and we're 50% real estate agents. So I'm going to market to real estate agents. So, um, yeah, but like, you know, I can't, I can't, I don't know the dynamics. I can't say, <laughs> Oh, just get listings close to you because you know, that may be your baby, you know, or those areas that are an hour out. You may have like a lot of pull in those areas. You don't want to like let go of all that influence you have and the, the, the businesses you've built in those areas. So it's, it's easier said than done to say, oh, I'm not going to take those. But if that's the kind of business you've built and you are susceptible to taking listings that are an hour and out, yes, I would hire someone who specifically all they do is just, you know, as this thing ramps up, and if you do start getting a bunch of calls and you continue listing properties in those areas that are far away, absolutely. You need to have one person that uh, they're on the payroll and that's all they do. I may have to assign it out to some of my agents in that area. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, 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 exactly. You're just going to have to put together a system that that kind of works, you know. Um, what do you do when, when people call on those listings now? <clears throat> um, I have agents that uh, I just give them the buyer, but mm -hmm. I can't do that if there's um, a buyer that's not wanting to sign a BBA. They want to go through the listing agent. Right. I may just um, have one of my team members just go and if they want to represent that buyer, I'll pay them the 1%. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. And I haven't seen anything that prevents us from referral fees, guys. Right. So like if a, if, if you have an agent go show that <laughs> listing and your your sellers paying an extra one percent on unrepresented buyers, nobody says you can't give a referral fee to to that agent, um, you know, for the service rendered of showing that property for you, um, you know. Yeah. So anyway, something to talk to your broker about for sure, to try to get a system down that works, that falls within the rules, falls within the guidelines, make sure we're not crossing any, you know, weird things. Cause that's the last thing you want to do guys. Like who would have thought we'd be in this situation where literally $1 billion cash, 1 billion has went into uh, the settlement so far. It's crazy. Crazy. Good stuff, though. And congrats on your business. Um, Johnny. Hello. Am hey, I, bro, how are you, man? Can you hear me? I'm good. Yeah. Um, I guess there's a few questions, and I've gotten kind of a uh, little thrown off track by all these referral agreements. That won't ever work. Um, you know, if a buyer won't sign anything with a buyer's agent, how can you give a referral from it to it? Um, and if they know they're going to get say, money, you got to talk to your broker. I mean, I haven't heard anything against yeah. that. Right. Well, it's like, I having mean, a team, it's like having a team member. Like once the commission comes in, especially if we're at the same brokerage, right. It makes it 10. Yeah. If well, so if you're at the same brokerage yeah, and you already know behind, yeah, I mean, you like, can't sign an, um, here. Yeah. You can't sign an agreement for one price and then get a different price from the seller. Uh, that's in the new law. So if you sign an agreement you mean with the your buyer, buyer, you mean the buyer? Well, no. If you sign an agreement with your buyer saying I'll get two percent, yeah, and then a seller is offering three, you don't get three, you get two. Well, well, yeah, but yeah, but if you read deeper into what the president of NAR, Kevin Sears, said, he said that those buyer agency agreements can have addendums, and they said, they said it had to be, have a clear amount. They made a very distinct, it had to be an exact amount stated up front, agreed with the buyer, and that the buyer's agent couldn't get a different amount. Yeah, no, um, they, did, they, they, they absolutely did say that, but they also said that, that the door could be open to revise that number through an addendum. Again, again, okay, again, this was, I, I didn't this see was anything the about the addendum. Yeah, this was the president of NAR, Kevin Sears. And I've, I've been following it all pretty closely. The other yeah. thing, I guess the big thing that I was wondering about, um, a lot of people haven't been talking about this in the agreement. There's an expiration date to this. Um, this isn't forever, you know, we're never allowed to offer co-op again. There was an actual expiration date yeah. on the agreement. So what, for the next seven years, we don't do co-ops, but then in seven years, we can offer co-ops back on the MLS again. That's what never, it says. But on the never agreement. know what's going to happen, bro. Yeah. I you mean, never know, what, you never know what's going to happen. With the Department of Justice going back on their agreement from a few years ago. Exactly. Exactly. And then, yeah, and then, who and knows then you know, we have an election more. coming up, right? We have an election coming up. If if the if the seed if the if the C changes the other direction, well, we start to see some leniency towards the like. You never know, yeah, right? And it's it's hard okay. to it's hard to put too much weight into it, except for one thing. Show me what, like, what do I need to do to stay compliant and and continue to help people and serve people, help them buy and sell real estate. Yeah, I mean, I guess the message I'm getting from you and this meeting overall is you, you got to be a seller's agent uh there's but, really th th listen, at no certainty as a buyer's agent here, like you'll thing. still try here's the thing here's the thing is that's always been the case we might yeah. want to deny yeah. this 
We might want to say whatever. Listing agents have always had the most leverage. They've all, it's always been the place to be. It's the only way I sold 100 properties a year for eight years in a row. Uh, and listen, you need to count any buyer you get as a bonus. Buyers are bonuses. If you get one, great. Your business should be focused yeah. around listings, right? I mean, yeah, I'm I'm a list more of a listing agent than a buyer's agent. Yeah. Uh, just how I work from referrals and all that. And Absolutely. I've even had people you I've had people use Redfin to buy and then use me to sell because they didn't trust the Redfin yeah. agent or the whatever agent they got because yeah. they just clicked a button and they didn't even realize who they were yeah. or what they were. So cool, I, I get it. Um yeah. All right. Good stuff. Thank Good you. Stuff. Guys, also, let me just tell you, I'm going to put this back in the chat real quick. I am in, get this, I'm in Miami, August 1st, Nashville, August 16th. I'm in uh, St. Augustine, October 15th, Vegas at Bam, at Bam Mania, October 18th. I'll be, where else will I be? Oh, I have a listing selling secrets, October 22nd. I just put a link to all those events. If you're anywhere around any of those areas, come out and see me. We'll love to love to see you. It's right there in the comments. Okay, I got time for a couple more questions. Uh, let's see, Kristen. Hello. Hey. Uh, so my, my question is kind of maybe a little further down the line after this change happens, but I'm foreseeing a issue with appraisals. So if someone has their listing on MLS with they built their 6%, they're paying 6%, three and three, and it's a million dollar house. And then someone else lists their house for 30% less because, or 3% less. So mm -hmm. which essentially is $30,000 less are yep. appraisers going to have to take into consideration what the commission was paid when yeah. appraising. I, yeah. My opinion, I'm not an appraiser. Mm -hmm. My opinion is yes. That's what they do now. I'll get calls from appraisers that ask me about listings that sold that that sold that we sold. And they'll ask me, was there seller concessions? Was there any seller? Like they take seller concessions into account with appraisals. Now they do. So I, I've ne I've never had an appraiser call me on that. I've had them call me on other things, but I've never had never someone had call, call and about say seller like, concessions concessions yes but right, not right, obviously right. Not commissions well so we're not there yet though we haven't had this issue every every deal has had you know five yeah. or six percent or whatever it hasn't been a thing but moving forward it will be a thing right it will be a thing oh i under i understand that i just don't yeah. know how long their industry is going to take to catch up and what that looks like as a listing agent There'll be a transition to educate period, your sellers but, but, but let me help you let me help you with this though don't mm -hmm. worry about it Okay. Don't worry about it. It's like, it's like whenever I got into these deals where we had a contract that was way overpriced, I mean, a contract that the purchase agreement was like way higher. And mm -hmm. I was thinking in my head, I don't know if this is going to appraise. I wouldn't mm -hmm. tell the seller that I might say, Hey, listen, we may have some kind of appraisal issue, but we'll just cross that bridge when we get, we'll see what happens. Let's just see what happens. And they're like, mm -hmm. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Let's just see what happens. Right. Just play it out. These appraisers are going to work with us, okay? They're not going to come in and be like, oh, well, that one had 3% extra. Like, well, but the market has improved since that one sold too, right? Mm -hmm. There's going to be there's going to be more factors happening. Um, okay. so Thank you. Don't, don't sweat it. Don't sweat it. Cross those bridges when you get there. And when things come up like that and you have to renegotiate because the, the, the appraisal came in low, that's no different than an inspection report coming in. And now you got to negotiate some, it's the same thing. Something yeah. happens, negotiate it, make it a small deal, keep moving. Something comes up, negotiate it, small deal. You know, try not to turn these things into big ordeals, you know. Okay. You know, um, perceive it as very small to your clients and stuff. All right, cool. Uh, let's see what we got. I wanted to kind of give you guys a few tips real quick, and then I may take one or two more questions at the very, very end. Um right here let me get you bam all right cool so look here's the thing all right this is what i want you to think about when it comes to your business um after august 17th i want you to be now 
I said 50 to 100 listings earlier. That's Ricky talking. You guys have seen me make calls. I'll be making live calls Friday. Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern. I'll be live on YouTube making calls again. Uh, I'm going to post the replay to this tomorrow on YouTube. But at the end of the day, you know, you know, like you need to have your number. It needs to be a big number. Is it 20? We'll go get 20 listings. Now, how are we going to do this? You've got to hit the ground running. You need to be educated on how this new model works. You need to read through your listing agreements and you need to come up with all of your tools, right? You need to come up with all of your tools in your toolbox to handle all these objections, to be able to explain how this buyer agent uh, commission thing works now, um, that the buyers are going to sign an agreement, that they're paying their agent if they can't get it from the seller, how the whole thing is laid out. And what you need to do is be open-minded because you're going to be up against, and this is, a, this is what I think one of the problems is with some of the agents that are going to be stuck to the old way of doing things which may continue to be the, the way we do things. Again, I'm not predicting. I'm saying nobody knows what's going to happen. But at the end of the day, I believe that you're going to be up against agents that are taking 3% listings. And they are going to decouple listings. I can tell you that for a fact. You know, they are already separated on the agreements that are allowing buyer commission language on the listing agreement. I don't think that's, I think that'll be struck out shortly. But the ones that are still allowing that language on there, it's still separated differently than it was before. They're already separating there. Um, there are brokerages. There are brokerages who are not going to allow you to couple commissions. Um, you know, the seller can put towards the buyer agent commission, but it's going to be in the form of a concession. You got to be really careful, guys, with all this, because when we start setting the commission that the buyer's agent's going to get, and we we take away the buyer's opportunity to negotiate that, um, that's where the problem is. And so, but when you walk into these listing agreements, I want you guys to be savvy, and I want you to think outside the box. And I want you to think about what's best for your seller. The argument is, okay, if I'm not offering a buyer agent commission, it's just going to sit there. Well, yeah, for sure it would just kind of sit there. Honestly, I'm trying. I'm, I'm wondering about that. Yeah, in today's market where everybody's offering it, and in, in the next market where let's just say ten or twenty percent of people don't offer it, um, and eighty percent do. What are the prices on those? What are the conditions of those homes? Are we talking apples to apples? There's so many factors here. But my point is, is I want you to look out for your seller, right? Because regardless of what you guys or anybody wants to say, you are you have a fiduciary right to your seller over everyone else, right? If I, if I can save my seller some money and I don't do so, then I'm not going to sleep well at night. If I get money, if I if I extract money from my seller and give to a buyer agent because I was able to talk them into it, I don't know that I necessarily feel great about that either, knowing that they might not have had to pay that. So I just want you to keep all this in mind when you're at your listing points. I want you to read your listing agreements that you're going to use and the buyer agency agreements and all the agreements word for word. And I want you to walk into these listing agreements with an open mind to be negotiable about the buyer agent commissions at the point of the purchase agreement. If you take a listing for 3% and put on MLS that we are, um, we are entertaining uh, seller concession offers, make us an offer with the seller concession. We're open to it. We are open to it. Get the offer and then play it from there. I, I think if you if you take this by the horns and go out there and really push it hard, that you know what you're doing in this new world, you know how to negotiate the best deal for them, then you're going to get most of the listings. Because I think you're going to have agents who are saying, well, we're going to give 3% to the buyer agent. Well, they're going to be up against you in the interview. And you're like, well, maybe, maybe not. Let's see. Let's find out at the offer.
And I'm not telling you not to offer a buyer agent commission. I'm saying take it deal by deal based on their motivation. This seller, we may offer 3% seller concessions. This one, we may not. This one, may, we may offer 5,000 flat fee towards whatever the buyer wants. I don't know. It's per deal. But I'm saying be flexible and understand how this works. Don't stay in denial too long because this window of opportunity that you have to go take advantage of this opportunity before other agents catch on to what's going on is not going to last very long. So I want you to take advantage while it's here before the rest of the market catches up to you so that you can sit back with 20, 30, 40 listings and all the buyers are coming to you because they don't want to sign a buyer agency with their agent. Some will, some won't. But you're going to get some nice traffic from those listings and you're going to end up making a little more money on those deals. That's the way I think you guys need to play it. That's the way I would be playing. And by the way, that's the way I'm going to play it. I'm still doing the weekly email and flowing all our deals to my dad. So you better believe as soon as I get my hands on our new listing agreement, I will be drafting an email to, to go out there and drop a bomb on my clients and let them know I know what's up. And if you're looking to sell, I'm the guy to, to navigate this new market. And that's the way you need to be. All right, I'm going to take two more questions if you guys want to put your hands up. Let's see who we got. Whoever, let's see, is it Struer? Stewer? Stoyer, Anna Stoyer. Anna, so how you doing? I Hi, I'm in Indiana, and we actually, July 1st, it already took place. It's gone. Um, So I have two listings, and I'm having agents call me or text me even and asking me what the – BAC is. And I've just said, bring me an offer and we can talk about it then. Right. But why, what is, is, I feel like we're being bullied to continue to not represent the seller correctly. And I just want to well, know how, say, say, how do you script say, that? Say, say it again. So like the BAC is gone on the, on the MLS. So I have okay. two lists. Yeah. So the agent will say, I put a request in to show your house. What are you, what's your seller offering? Right. And I say, I've, I've, I've done it a few different ways. One I'm taking back. I was like, one, I'd like to have this on a phone call instead of a text uh -huh. because I think it's butts, like ballsy for a buyer's agent to just ask that. And I just don't understand. Like, I don't want to be a bully. I don't want to be glad you brought this up. I'm glad mm -hmm. you brought this up. Um, so this is the same thing as calling a buyer, a, a listing agent saying, what would your seller take? I don't know. <laughs> I have no That's idea. That's me to decide. Send me an offer. I'll present it to them. We'll see what they say. Okay. Is your is your seller um, paying a buyer agent commission? They might. Send me an offer with whatever your buyer's offering. I will submit it to them and get you a, either an acceptance or a counter offer. Right. I'm gonna get you one of two things: an acceptance or a counter offer. So, to answer your question, maybe send me an offer. Right. I can't do anything without an offer from you. I can't negotiate against myself. I don't know if he'll offer something. He said he'd enter, he would entertain seller concessions. Send me some. I don't know how much or even if he really will when he gets an offer. He may have changed his mind while we're talking. Right. It's the same. Like, what would you say if they if they called and said, what would you what would you um, what would your seller take? No clue. <laughs> Even even if you're asking six hundred and your seller told you I'll take five seventy five, if you said five seventy five, but he would have taken five fifty, which happens all the time, you might have scared that buyer off for making an offer when they would have paid five fifty, right? You don't say you never say what your client said because right. guess what? They don't even know that that's the truth. It's not that they're lying. It's just that when they get an offer in their hands. They have a completely different story. When they get it in their hands and they see a closing date and they're thinking they're counting the money, they're going to have it on this day. They're like, everything changes. I mean, they're like, okay, well, and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes they do stick to what they say, but, uh, but I'm here to tell you more times than not, they don't stick to what they say. Right. So, um, so even if they said, oh, I'll pay 2%, Anna, I'll pay 2%. You're not going to say that. They're going to say, yeah, he said he'd pay some, send us an offer and we'll see what we can do. You don't, cause you but don't, because if, if you said 2%, 
and then they sign something for one and a half with their buyer agent, then you just screwed your seller out of what you never give up your cards, right? You never do I that. Feel, I feel like the agents, like this industry is still stuck. Like we are very much like, well, everyone just play fair. Everyone play fair. Da, 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 da. And it's like, not going to happen. Huh? Not going to happen. Yeah, I know. You can't. So you just become you the bad play, guy listen, in the industry and you, you get a You can't serve two masters. <laughs> yeah. You can't serve your seller at the highest level and agents at the highest level. You have to serve someone. Mm -hmm. And I'm, and I'm sorry, you know, and, and people may disagree with me and I love you guys and I love all my local agents, but I have a contractual obligation to give a fiduciary service to my, to my client. Right. And I'm going to negotiate the very best deal for them, period, end of story. And they're going to come back and use me time and time. They're going to refer me to so many people. Why? Because they know that I'm a killer. I'm a, I'm a shark. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a lion every single time I get in the middle of a deal with them. Right. And I'm not going to give up my cards because I'm literally um, compromising um, my seller's position. Make sense? Absolutely. No, I, yeah. I couldn't agree more. I just can't believe that people are still trying to just push the old way. So from experience already, Listen, it's just, that's the first question. It's like, well, this is not, this is not a discussion anymore. That's yeah, why it's not in the MLS. Yeah, make an offer. We're, we're, listen, I'm telling you, denial, then comes anger, then finally acceptance. You can't go around this thing. This is going to be what it's going to be. Right. Good stuff. Good to see you. Okay. Let's see. I got time for two more. Let's see. Jacob, go for it. Hey, uh, Ricky, thanks for having me. Uh, unpopular opinion in here, probably a uh, long time investor. I got my real estate license. I was um, kind of tired of getting blackballed when I was doing for sale by owner. So I went ahead and got my own license and I, I'm not a listing agent. I mostly list my own properties for sale, uh, relatively newer to the industry. But I was wondering as an investor, when I used to sell properties, I would always write in my listing price of what I wanted to pay the agents, right? 6%, three and three. Uh, but now as an agent myself and listing my own properties, what are maybe some creative ways that I can entice some of these agents to actually bring their clients to my listings. Um, I don't think you're going to have to, I think they're going to have, I think they're going to have an agreement for their buyer. I think, you know what I think is going to happen. I think buyers are going to call you more than agents or maybe 50, 50. And then I think that the, the agents are going to have a deal worked out with the buyers that they're representing to pay them. But you can offer a seller concession. You know, you can offer, you know, a one percent seller concession or something, you know, to go towards whatever yeah. the buyer, whatever the buyer wants, or or, or even two percent, or I'm just throwing a number out there, but you can kind of do yeah. whatever you want to do. Um, does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. And I mean, just to be clear, I'm totally fine with paying um buyer agent commissions. I, I totally understand all the hard work that goes into it. Yeah, it's not an easy task, especially you know, showing a lot of properties and managing a lot of different clients, you know, you can have 10 listings, uh, but it's hard to have 10 buyers. Uh, you know, there's a lot more work on yeah. that oh, buyer yeah. side. Yeah. You, you ask a bunch of agents, you know, you're like, you, you want, you want 30 active buyers or 30 active set, uh, listings, right. right? I agree a hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. So what I mean, can I advertise, uh, 0% uh, if the buyer comes directly to me, like, um, Hey, Hey buyers, um, pay 0% buyer fee because if you're buying straight from me, I'm not going to pay myself my own fee because the taxes are different and, and yada, yada, but I'll well, have that already no, baked into a, my sale price. Well, no, you're offering a seller concession. If I offer both, I guess I say. So if I say, hey, buyers, if you come to me, it's 0%. Buyers, agents, I'll offer a concession of You won't have to say two. that. Okay. You, you, won't, have, you nice. won't have to say that because the buyers who want your home that don't want to pay an agent they're just going to they're just going to contact you i don't think you're going to have to like put it out there to like try to get 
buyers to entice them to come to your property. But look, this, nobody knows. It's going to be a trial and error thing, you know, and we're just going to have to test things and see what works. Awesome. I appreciate that. Thanks. Any, any, anything more than a test is just a guess at best. And your guess is, be is, is as good as mine, as good as the milkman's, as good as, you know, my wife's, as good as my dog's. You know, yep. a, gu a guess is nothing without a test. So I guess um, to your point, as far as what I want my listing price to be, um, like what you said earlier, if the buyer comes straight to me, I'll just consider that as a bonus. So I'll put the 2%. Yeah. Uh, I'll put the 2% in there for buying agents. And yeah, if I get lucky and they come to me, I guess I get a 2% bonus or Hey, I'll come down to 2% for the buyer, you know, just to, that's just what I'm to move saying. the property. Oh, you yeah. had it in, you had it in there. So good stuff, brother. Let's go with awesome. Stephanie. You're awesome, man. I love your content. Thanks. Thank you, bro. I appreciate that. Let's go with Stephanie. And then I'm going to hit the rest of you guys that have your hands up, but it's going to be really quick. If you could, Stephanie could just say, my question is I'm going to do rapid uh, fire here. Okay. How can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Hi there. <laughs> All right. So my question is pretty direct. Actually, I'm wondering, I, I'm totally grasping everything you're saying. I'm welcoming it. I, I just believe there is a lot of opportunity here as you've shared. What I'm wondering if you would do is share like a quick little like role play type of exercise. What number one, what are you going to, I know our markets are different. So I'm in Boston and we are MLS pin like which was this whole case focus around yeah. MLS pin. So yeah. I big box brokers, I'm an independent broker. I've been in the business since 06. But what but but Stephanie, but what is your question? Cuz this is my, the lightning round. Okay, sorry. My question is what are you going to charge or what are you generally speaking going to ask sellers to pay you in the listing agreement? I say 3%. 3 I say 3 and then another point if it's a if an unrepresented buyer comes my way. Right? And then oh. and and then if and then and then and then the and then the seller concessions towards buyer agent buyer commissions is is a separate conversation. There's my commission, right? And then there's the seller concessions towards buyer agent commissions or whatever the buyer wants to use that money for, right? Those are two separate conversations, right? So like I'm gonna charge three, you know, whatever. Maybe it ends up being two and a half. We'll have to see kind of where the market settles around. You know, we don't, we don't quite know. It's going to be, it's going to be a minute as things transition. Um, okay. And then like one or one and a half or even two, again, don't know exactly, but you kind of see where I'm going. It's going to be around half of what we charge now with a little more if an un unrepresented buyer comes along. And then the, and then the seller concessions conversation is a separate conversation as to if they want to offer that or not. Right. So you're saying point one, two, three. Point one, you're thinking about three percent. This is your fee, mm -hmm. and then point two, you're saying for unrepresented buyers, a possible one or one and a half or two percent. Now, would you put that in the addendum? The addendum of the listing agreement. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's where you would put unrepresented buyer fee. Now, no, 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 no. No, unrepresented buyer fee is part of the listing agreements. Right. Not all listing agreements, but a lot of different areas listing agreements I've seen has the first line for commissions is what you're getting paid to be the listing agent. The next line is what you're going to get paid if an unrepresented buyer comes through. It's printed in the listing agreement as the next line. That, that's that's in there. OK, I'm not saying, I'm not saying it's going to be in your agreement up there in pen. I don't know what y'all are going to do. Right. Like my brokerage is using our own listing agreements. We're not using the one that the board's giving us right? Or oh. MLS, right? Um, you know, so each brokerage, each area, each, each um, county, each MLS are going to do different things. So, you know. Okay. So yeah. part three of that question real quick is for the seller concession piece. Do you foresee this becoming a problem? Because obviously when you're obtaining a mortgage, the seller concession can only be a certain amount. So you actually cannot get funding if seller yeah. concession. No, you're, no, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. It depends, it depend, but we don't know who the buyer is if they're paying cash. We don't know if what kind of loan they're going to have. If that loan, in fact, you know, has uh, limitations. Some do, some don't. Um, we don't. We don't know that yet. So all we can do is, if we want to throw a number out there, throw out a number that the seller feels comfortable with and see what happens. Do you think it'd be advantageous to put together marketing pieces that specifically state what 
percent of the concession will be allowed per purchase price? I think that that's sense? getting for me. That's getting a little too. I, I, that's not my personality type. Like that's getting too detailed into the weeds. Okay. You know, um, three percent addendum for unrepresented buyers because we don't have that as of now. So that answered my question. Thank you Good. so much. <laughs> Good. Keep, keep me informed. Let me know how that goes. Well, thank you so much. Mm. Yeah, Dennis, I see what you're saying. There's a difference between holding cards to benefit our clients in a price range, in a price negotiation, and being transparent with the buyer agent who asks about seller concession to cover comp. I mean, but the thing is, there is if like we're at we're we're offering a a, a seller concession. <laughs> let me mute you guys. If we're offering a seller concession and there's like a set amount, that amount can be on on MLS. That should be there. They shouldn't be calling us to ask us about that. If it's not on MLS because we're saying we'll entertain and we don't want to put a number, then we're not going to say a number when they call. If we know a number, the number, you know, if the number is not on MLS, it's not on MLS for a reason. We don't want them to know what we're willing to pay. So we're not going to tell them a number. If it's on MLS, that means it's public knowledge. And we're happy to tell them because it's on MLS, if that makes sense. So there's going to be moments, I think, Dennis, where you do and moments when you don't. Dangerville. Danger! Yes, sir. How are we doing, Ricky? I'm hey, a buddy. huge fan, man. I got to say thanks a lot for everything. Thank you, um, bro. Um, your question is? Yes. Uh, the question is, do you think at some point the MLS will become something like a seller? Buyers can also have access to just like uh, sellers. Sometimes they pay like a flat fee, like a novation fee. They just uh, put the property on the MLS like uh, like they that. They get to search the MLS or something? Yeah. Well, they kind of do now through uh, Zillow and basically any IDX website has all the listings. So what would they need that for? It's uh, it's it's because the MLS, you know, how the MLS is probably the largest place where you can list the property. Like realtors would just put them on there, so now they personally can get on the MLS and access it uh, and and see everything themselves instead of having. What are they? You know, what are they not seeing? Them. What are they not seeing now? Uh, previously they couldn't see the uh, the commission. They, they couldn't see uh, the commissions aren't uh, going to be on there anymore. anymore. Oh, oh, I know what you mean. Like um, like agent remarks and stuff. Yes. I don't think so. I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah. I don't, I don't okay. think that's going to happen. And, and I think, um, I think seller concessions will be a public thing. I think that'll be like in the regular remarks or I think I'm just giving you my opinion. I think that'll be something that people will be able to see. Gosh, that makes sense. Good to see you, bro. Of course. Thanks. Um, Franz. And yep. guys, if you're just tuning in too, I don't know if you saw uh, today only, I'm doing this $100 off of the VIP experience of the Set More Listing Appointment Challenge starting August 5th. This is going to be the one you want to be on. I just put the uh, link to that in the comments. Go ahead, France. My, uh, I posted my question in the uh, chat. I don't know if you saw it, but but to be clear, my question is, what does it seem like um, the, the, the thing that happened is – Buyers agents are um, being being um, reprimanded for for a good practice. Um, well, they're not. They're um, okay. yeah, they're um, they're actually in the eyes of justice. Okay, okay. you with yeah. me? In the eyes yeah. of justice, they're now given the option to negotiate their commission, whereas before. They weren't given that option, even though that option existed, mm -hmm. it wasn't presented to them, right? It was to the buyers, told, right? Huh? To the buyers, correct? Right. The buyers, the buyers just bought a house. They didn't even know what their what their agent was getting. Come okay. to find out, they got two and a half or three percent, and they had mm -hmm. they they didn't have. There was no moment where they were told what that percent was going to be, or had the ability to negotiate that. Mm -hmm. Right. They could have turned the. They could have got. They, they could have said. Well, I'm paying three. Well, I want to, I want to, I'll, I'll pay you two. I know it's figured into the deal, but I want to get a, a point off the price. Right. They had no negotiation right. of their agent's fee who was actually working mm -hmm. for them. So in the right. eyes of justice, mm -hmm. 
they're actually now given that opportunity. Okay. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, which, 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 you know, at the same time, you're right. It's taken away the opportunity to be represented yeah. for a lot of, a lot of buyers who can't afford buyer agency, right. who will more than likely have to buy unrepresented and more than likely run into some bad situations. Right. Okay. But that's the world that we've been thrown into my guy. Mm-hmm. Okay. I guess my, la- my last question is um, if that's the case, what weren't we being compensated by the, the seller previously uh, to, right. for like incentive? Okay. Right. Uh, so then I, I'm not, uh, I guess what I'm confused on is why would, um why would the buyer also want to, I guess, then incur the potential of having to compensate the, the, the agent? Well, they don't want to, but they want to, right. be, they want to be represented. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a law. Law- it's like a lawyer. You you go you go you talk to them. You have a consultation, mm-hmm. and then you have to pay them for you to, for them to work for you. Right. Right. Sure. I, and listen, we're gonna go through this. Where again, denial, anger, acceptance. We're we're yeah. we're we're, we're, it, we're in denial. It's just like we, we this can't be. This is gonna be bad for first time home buyers. It's gonna be horrible for the industry. Less less buyers are gonna have representation. Yes. Yeah. I'm not creating the rules. I'm just trying to mm-hmm. help you make more money. OK, um, mm-hmm. I hate that part of it. From a business perspective, we're going to run more efficiently because we're not going to mm-hmm. work with buyers who say, hey, I'm not going to pay you or we'll work with the buyers who say, I'll pay you 2 percent, but only if the seller pays it. Right. So now we only show houses that the seller is paying or has seller concessions offered. Uh, on MLS or wherever the wherever the thing is, so now that limits the homes that that buyer could buy because maybe they wanted right, right. a home that the seller's not offering it, and mm-hmm. now that buyer doesn't go after a home they would have loved even more, right? Mm-hmm. So this whole situation is hurting buyers. I agree with you. What can mm-hmm. I do about it? Right, I can't do anything about it, but look at the new rules and say, okay, this is the way it is. How can I build the most efficient business to go out here and continue to crush it? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, we're not going to, in my opinion, we're just, you know, it may turn into a thing where we don't work with every single buyer like we were, right? Okay. Which isn't yeah. a bad thing. When you think about just business efficiency, you know, one mm. good thing, one silver lining I see is that it's turning a lot of so-called buyer heavy agents. Mm. And now they're actually doing the work to learn how to become great listing agents. Okay. And, and yeah, I think that yeah. that I think that that is 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 one. There's there's some silver linings within this thing, and there's some huge <laughs> negatives within this thing, right? Mm-hmm. You can either look at the silver linings and take advantage of it, because mm-hmm. the world's going to move, is keep spinning with you or without you, mm-hmm. or we can dwell on the negative aspects of it and say, oh, the poor first time home buyers, etc., which I feel really bad about. But again. What can I do about it? I can only do what I can do, right? Yes, sir. You got this, bro. Yes, sir. Thank you. Get out there and list some properties. Yes, sir. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, let's see. You guys, okay, if you if you want to ask a question, turn your video on. I think I see three more hands. I'm going to answer those three. Aura, go for it. Your question is? So, hey there, Ricky. I've, I've been online a couple times with you. Thank you for picking me. I'm representing Las Vegas. And and let me tell you, this, this is what I feel every time I listen to anything, I mean, even, even something on YouTube, is I just keep hearing one thing. That's all I hear. And even on this, you've given so much good advice, but I just keep hearing you say, list houses. Okay. Make calls, list houses. This, And, and I just wanted to end with that, that and as I was sitting here listening to you, because I've done your emails, I just had a past client call and said, or oh, I want to sell my house. And she said, I love those emails you're sending out. And it's so funny because I've been just putting my fake is, my focus has been on my faith. Yeah. And that all things are possible. So I just want to celebrate you and say thank you for continuing to say the one thing, pick up the phone and call focus, get listings, pick up the phone and call, focus, get listings, because that just tickles my heart. And about 
three months ago, I talked to your dad. I called your office and your dad is your biggest cheerleader. <laughs> and all he kept saying to me, he kept saying to me, you know what, or just do what Ricky says. Just that's it. OK, sister, just do what Ricky says. Wow. And so for me, being 65 years old, transitioning from, you know, when I came in the business, I finished my degree in 1981 and the market was horrible. And here I was, this African American in Las Vegas, the west of Mississippi, uh, the, the 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 Mississippi West. I'm sorry, let me say it like that. And yet I was so vivacious, and you know everything was closed. We just didn't have all this information that was available, and even um, you know as a minority, so much was just. It was different. It was very different, guys. Very different, even in America. And I apologize, my earring fell off. So for those of you who are kind of like, where is her earring? Um, but one thing I said back then was, um, I, I'm going to stay in this business. I'm going to stick around. And after 43 years, I just opened my own company. And that was just a personal goal. Um, and the Lord had told me, Isaiah, I think it's 6022 at the right time, I will make it happen. And so I just want to say to everybody, focus, make the phone calls, get the listing, focus, make the phone calls, get the listing. And God bless you, bro. I pray for you every time I think about you and your beautiful family and the gift that you are to this community. Thank you for that. Wow. Wow. Give her a hand. Are you coming to, have you been to one of my challenges? Say it again, Ricky. Have you been to one of my challenges? You know what? I start and I stop. But let me tell you, the blessing is I brought my daughter into my business who was marketing oriented. She's the reason why we have the newsletters going out and uh, doing the videos and all of that. So I had texted her, I think last week before I went out of town and I said, we're doing this. So we're already in part of your, we pay whatever. I, I don't even know because she's got a carte blanche and a credit card. And so, yes, we are going to do that. If we aren't signed up, we will sign up. So, and so we're, we're just 5th, believing God so for make miracles. Sure you, make sure you do the VIP experience. Okay, because you get to come an hour early each day and ask me questions and hear other Q and A, and then we do four days, and I will teach you more about getting listings, lead gen, conversion, retention, building a million dollar business. I'll teach you more about all those things than you ever even thought you yeah. knew during those four days. So if you haven't done that, it. if you're a Ricky yeah. fan and you haven't done that, you yeah. need to do that. Do you still have an agreement? Amen. Cool. With her? Amen. Good to, good to well, see I'm you. I'm all in. I, I just Ricky. passed it back to I know. I know. Uh, but now Hold on. You somebody's, don't. you'll have to unmute. I had to mute that guy. So I, I'm i your Joshua and you're my Moses. Roles are kind Let's of. Let's get it. <laughs> Let's get it. I'm about, I'm about to part the, sea. Over I'm about to part Ricky. the Red Sea. We're going to take them when Israelites I, wait, right up you, out of Ricky. Egypt. I'm going to lay hands on you and pray for you, and you're going to watch just miracles happen. I'm Jesus about to go name. up to Mount Sinai. I'm about to go up to the top. I'm going to have them commandments. I'm going to part that Red Sea and get them Israelites right up out of Egypt. Let's get it. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. So for now, you're my Moses, and I'm your Joshua. I'm your Elijah asking God for a double portion of what you have, and I'm looking for the immediate. And so, yes, you got, you definitely got raving fans in Las Vegas. And, and I tell you what, we got some collard greens and chicken for you. <laughs> Can't wait. I'm going to be in Vegas. I'm going to be there. In I got October. I got, in October. Yeah. Yeah. I'm actually coming. I'm actually coming for the UFC at the sphere on uh, September 14th. So, um, so shoot me a little message or something before then. Maybe I can squeeze through wherever you're at over there. Yes, yes, and I'm an excellent cook. So, amen. all right, good to see you. Thank Talk you to you for soon. Your time, beautiful people. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Randy, let's make it quick. Yeah, first off, Laura, thank you for that confidence. You know, because you know, God, we plan our steps. We we plan our path, but God directs our steps. You know, maybe I got it wrong, yeah. but you know, um, so that's that's awesome. Really quick. Uh, so I'm from Texas. I'm from Dallas. And um, we I can actually send you, Ricky, if you want. I can send you the the forms that has the edits out and the strike throughs. If you want to take a look at it for the Texas side, I don't know if you have it. But what I have noticed is I built my business on and I love what you say, because buyers are are the cherry on top and and what I've done is, is I specialize, I kind of niched myself in new construction. 
I've talked to different types of builders and everything around here in Dallas, and that commission structure isn't changing. They're still going to be paying three, four, five percent um, for the buyers. So if y'all have, well, I know you do, but you guys having new construction, don't lose faith in that because go to the builders and knit yourself and start being a part of of uh, the new construction community. So if you can't, if the new, if the uh, first time home buyers can not afford your services, then you can actually have another segue of into the new construction. And then what I do love, you said I'm actually turning my business into more of a listing and being more proactive because the listings is I can control how many people I call. I can control how many listings I get. I can control so, my time. Well, Randy, I, I hate to interrupt you. I really do. Cause I'm loving everything you say, but I have to get to the question here. Oh, sorry. Um, I went blank on my, on my question. You know what? That I, Thank you just for letting me talk. Um, oh, okay. You just, you just speak your mind? No, no, no. I had a question I completely forgot. and But I was kind of like, I had a lot end up I wanted to say. But new construction, everybody, look at the new construction because they're still paying percentages on that. Yeah. And oh, yeah, you yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. On... New construction is the thing, man. Figure out what that builder's paying and yeah. uh, and get up in there. No, I'm with you on that. Because new construction and then build your business off new construction and on listings, you'll mm -hmm. be set. Absolutely, bro. No, good good stuff, man. Good to see you too, by the way. Good to see you too. It's been a while. Talk to you soon, brother. All right, thanks, buddy. Bye-bye. All right. Last one here. Share, 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 Lee. Unmute. Hi, Ricky. So hey. I've been following you for ever and ever, and... I still, unfortunately, have phone reluctance, um, but that's going to end as quickly as it possibly can, because I'm serious this time. This is, I think this is the greatest opportunity for all of us as real estate agents to show our clients what they, um, what they deserve um, from the person that represents them, be you representing a buyer or a seller. Um, yeah. unfortunately I come from a different profession and, um, and this is like my last go round. and I've always said real estate's the least professional profession I've ever been a part of. Yeah. And I think this is going to change that whole thing. And I just want to commend you for continuing to be positive about the fact that, you know, we are here to represent our client, whether they be a buyer or a seller, and it is our responsibility, our fiduciary responsibility to make sure Mm -hmm. that we take care of our client. Um, and I just feel very strongly about that. And I really appreciate you. And I'm going to be on your listing challenge because you're going to break my fear of picking up the phone. I was just going to say. I'm going to excel. Yeah. I was just going to say, just... Somebody, somebody commented and said, call reluctance is a legit hurdle. And I'm glad you said that because I was going to respond to that. So I'll respond to both of you guys. Yeah, if you come to the listing challenge, I'm going to break all that call reluctance. I'm going to crush and squash all that for you. You'll you'll walk away. Go go to the set more listing appointments challenge, and there's like I don't know, fifteen te uh, fifteen um, testimonial videos uh, on that page of agents mm -hmm. that were scared to make calls. And now I got one agent that did 50 grand in two months. One, one guy that got five listings in two months, one guy that's getting three listings a month, you know, like just just story after story after story of people who did that challenge and are crushing it now. So, yeah. Well, I just cleared my calendar for the four days so that yeah. I can implement right after I get off the call with you. Yeah. And thank you for fixing the VIP on the silver yeah. numbers. Yeah, I got it. I got it all. All squared away, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I'll post the replay tomorrow if you guys want to watch the uh, watch the replay of this. And uh, Friday, Friday, I'm making live calls at 3 p.m. Uh, Eastern, so I'm looking forward to that. And uh, and then uh, in two weeks from then, I'll be doing the challenge. And and of course, next Friday, I think that's August 1st. When is August 1st? August 1st is next Thursday. 
I'll be down in Fort Lauderdale. So you can go to the link of my uh, Instagram bio for all my upcoming events. I got Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Nashville, um, Vegas, uh, St. Augustine. I want to be in all those places doing training sessions in person. So looking forward to seeing you guys at one of those with a challenge. Anything I could do to help, just message me on Instagram. Love you guys so much. Let's keep it going, man. We uh we got this, right? The greater the worry, the greater the waste. Don't worry about a thing. We in the driver's seat. See you guys.